So a scribe came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? From the Ten Commandments that was given to Moses, the teachers of the law had formulated 613 other precepts. 613. And so which is the greatest of all the commandments? In other words, you know, going back to the essential, which is more important? Which is, what is the commandment? And Jesus' answer, quoting from our first reading today from the book of Deuteronomy, Jesus replied, the first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is what we call the, the Shema. Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. And every devout Jew knows this by heart. Every devout Jew prays this even up to now. If you see the movies or you have been to the Holy Land, they even have that little box you know, tied on their head as they pray, containing you know, this word, this commandment. And it's not more than just a commandment. It is like a profession of faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. And the imperative is here, you know, the, the commandment. Which is the first of all the commandments? The first is this, hear, O Israel. So, the very first word is Shema, hear. The commandment is hear, listen, open your ears, open your heart, and then be obedient. Hear, O Israel, is to be able to obey. We first have to listen. You know, the, the connection between listening and obedience, the word obedience itself is from the Latin, ubidire, udire, udire, to listen. Because, uh, to, again, in order for us to listen, in order for us to obey, we have to hear first. The connection, hear, obey, love, there is always that opening to the other, right? Listening, and then obe obeying, and then loving. So there is always that, that uh, the giving of access to the other. So hearing, obeying, and then Listen, uh, 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 loving. So, again, this prayer here in Israel is repeated several times by the devout Jew even to this day. You shall love the Lord. First, he said, the Lord our God is Lord alone. Now, as we were um, singing the Gloria at the beginning of the Mass, my attention was called on the last verse or the last phrase of, of, of the Gloria. And thrice the word alone is repeated. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. There is only one God. The Lord, the God, the Lord our God is Lord alone. No other. And we live in a world, of course, where there are many gods presented to us. The God of power, the God of money, the God of reputation, whatever. Other gods. There is only one God. The Lord our God is Lord alone. One God who created us, one God who sustains us, one God who loves us, the same God who calls us back to himself in love. Only one God. And Jesus says, again, from the book of Deuteronomy, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and with all your being. To love Him with all your being. Loving God with all that we are. How do we love Him with all our being? You know, there is the term in spiritual theology, the... Uh, Loving attention, amorous attention. When we love someone, we have that beloved always in our mind. We think of that person every time. Everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we are, 
is always guided and directed by the beloved. You know, a person who loves, go to the store and thinks of the beloved. Oh, she would love this. Oh, but very, very, I mean, you go and pick up something for the kitchen. Oh, I think, oh, she, this, I know, he loves, likes this. Because everything is the beloved. When you love, you think of that person that you love always. Everything is guided. Everything is directed towards what that person likes, what that person cares for. So love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, with all that you are. There was 100% absolutely. And again, we go back to Gen Legends, all of me, you know, all of me is for God. Gen Legends says, you give me all of you, I give you all of me. God has given us all of himself in Jesus Christ and expects us to give all of ourselves to him in love 100%. That is how we love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all our being. And then the second, the question is, which is the first of all commandments? And Jesus says, this is the first. And the second is this. Now linking the first to the second, you shall love the, your neighbor as yourself. Love of God is manifested and revealed concretely in our love of neighbor, which is the more challenging thing to do, right? It's easy to love God. Lord, I love you. He doesn't talk back to me. I fight with him. But I, my neighbor, oh, come on, it's more difficult. My neighbor criticizes me, talks back to me. I fight. It's not easy. But love of God is manifested concretely in our love of neighbor. St. John says in his first letter, how can you say that you love God whom you cannot see when you cannot love your neighbor whom you see? You're a liar, St. John says in his letter. And, of course, we speak here of loving, not as a mere feeling, we mentioned and we are reminded of the definition of love by St. Thomas of Aquinas that is willing, is plainly willing the good of the other. And so it's not just liking because we know we cannot like everyone. And of course, the reality is we are not liked by everyone either. We know that. So as much as we strive to be Liked by people, it's impossible. Same thing, you cannot like everyone. But loving goes beyond these nice feelings. Loving goes beyond appearance. Loving goes beyond feelings. Jesus says at the Last Supper to his disciples, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And how is that love of God for us? I mean, it's not just I love you because you are good to me. I love you because you are kind to me because you give me things. No, we tend to love, again, it, because it bounces back to us. I love you. You are good to me. I love you. You make me happy. I love you because you fulfill me. I love you because you smile at me every time we see each other and say hello. Well, how can I love the person that does not like me or uh, doesn't even say anything to me, instead criticizes me and maligns me. Love, again, according to St. Thomas of Aquinas, is just willing. It's solely willing the good of the other. And that is God's love for each one of us, right? Just willing our good. What does he get if we love him back? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And yet he continues to love us. That is the nature of God, right? Love. God is love, St. John says again in his letter. And so to love with the heart of God is just to plainly will the good of the other person, no matter what, no matter notwithstanding the fact that he or she doesn't like me or she doesn't correspond to that love. 
That is like the love of a parent to a child. A love that is unconditional, knows no bounds, knows no limits. Just willing, playing to the good of the other. So to love my neighbor whom I do not particularly like is to pray for the neighbor and to be willing to help that neighbor in times of his need, her need. That is loving with the heart of Jesus, with the love with which love with which God loves us. Love one another as I have loved. So the criterion now is God's unconditional love, plainly and solely willing the good of the other. It goes beyond feelings. It's not easy, right? But when but precisely we need to ask Jesus to give us his heart, right? that prayer of the sacred heart, you make my heart like yours. To be able to love without measure. Right? So the Augustine says to, to love, the measure of love is to love without measure. And same thing, Augustine has said, you know, love God and do whatever you will. To love God first is to love others. Because when we love him, then we love everything that he loves. And we cannot do any harm to anyone, not even think about doing any harm to others. And of course, the teacher of the law <clears throat> said to, to Jesus, well, well said, teacher, you're right in saying he's one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Good job, teacher. And Jesus says to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God, which does not necessarily mean that he is close to the kingdom of God. You are not far from the kingdom of God. Does it mean he is close to the kingdom of God? Not necessarily. Because he lacks one thing. Now, it is not necessary. I mean, it is not just knowing the precepts, knowing the commandments, knowing the scriptures, it is establishing the relationship, personal relationship with Christ as our Lord, as the Messiah, as my Redeemer, as my Savior. Remember, several times we have quoted Saint ben Pope Benedict XVI. Christianity is not just a matter of of a set of obeying, a set of rules, complying with a set of rules. It is a matter of an encounter with a living person that is Jesus. You are not far from the kingdom of God. But he, need, he needed to recognize Jesus as Lord. He needed to recognize who Jesus was. And so salvation is establishing the relationship with the living Christ and establishing the relationship, loving Him with all our heart, with all our being, and seeing Him, seeing him in our neighbors and transmitting, translating that love concretely to our brothers and sisters. My dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, love God with all our heart with all our soul, our mind, our strength, our being, and loving Him in our brothers and sisters. Amen.